Today we are going to play Venetia, uh, which is an area control game with dice action selection and uh, action card mechanics. Um, it's going to have a uh, variable uh, tracker for the number of turns that are happening in the game, so we won't know exactly how long the game will be. Uh, so we'll be paying attention to that as we go. Uh, it's for two to four players. It's going to take us about 90 minutes to two hours to play. Uh, we'll set it up for you here, and then we'll go ahead and play it and talk about it. And we'll learn about Italy. We're going to play this game over the course of an indeterminate number of turns. And here we have this turn track that's going to advance as uh, various things happen out on the board. This white marker is going to slowly advance. When it gets to this filled-in space, that's going to begin the second epic. Once we get there, then this black piece will start moving toward us. Uh, when those two pieces reach the same space, that's going to begin our third epic. Uh, and these are marked up here at the top with these epic markers, one, two, and three. And then the game will end when this black marker reaches this white space. Uh, so we aren't sure exactly how long the game will take. Uh, we're going to dynamically be watching these markers moving toward each other over the course of the game. Uh, in Venetia, we are all playing families in the city of Venice. Uh, we are working on establishing our naval trade routes throughout the Mediterranean. Um, and we have this uh, map that's in a very classic uh, medieval Renaissance style. On it, uh, we have all these numbers that are indicating either sea routes, if they're these white spaces uh, with numbers in them, or colonies, if they're colored in on these uh, various provincial locations. At the beginning of the game, each player will choose a family uh, to play, and each family has a deck of cards. Uh, each family will also have a number of cubes, uh, and they'll have these little Podesta hats. Uh, Podesta are uh, city councilors. Uh, so as you establish dominance in these colonies, if you have enough control, then you'll have a city councilor. Um, those guys are going to be worth victory points later in the game. Uh, so each player is going to choose one of these families that they would like to play. Uh, the cards for each family are exactly the same. Uh, they're going to have different artwork and different names, but uh, they just have these family members that are numbered one through six. So at the beginning of the game, you're going to shuffle this deck of cards up. These are action cards. Each player will get three of them. Once each player has their three action cards, their family and their tokens, uh, the game is pretty much ready to go. Uh, you'll want to take these various tokens and put them in some kind of container to draw from. Uh, there are victory point tokens that are going to be numbered 1 to 3. Um, you'll want those in some kind of bag. Uh, you'll also have these military tokens that'll be these bigger round ones. You'll want to put those in a bag. And if you're using the optional... Uh, election rules, you'll need a bag for the election tokens, uh, which will be these other round ones. Uh, the game begins with us electing our first doge. Uh, that's going to be the leader here in Venice. Um, each player will choose one of their six cards and take a look at their action cards. Uh, on action cards, there's going to be a few different things that you can do with them. Uh, here's one of each type. Uh, you can see that they have different colored backgrounds, gray, yellow, and brown. Uh, those are going to match the action dice that we have. When you play an action card, you can only play it on a turn that you are using an action die that matches that color. So you have to take gray dice to use a gray action, um, or yellow or brown. 
At the bottom of the cards, they also have a number of ducats. Uh, that's how much the card is worth in terms of election power. Uh, they'll range from one to three in terms of value. Whenever you draw a card during the game, you immediately must make the decision if you are taking that card and adding it to your hand of cards to play so that you can use this ability text that will let you break the rules in some way, or if you're going to use it for its ducats value. Uh, in the basic elections, uh, which is what we'll talk about first, um, we'll come back and we'll talk about the optional rules later. Uh, in the basic elections, if you wanted to use one of these cards uh, when you drew it, you would just take it and stick it under your family's crest up here, uh, and that'll be used during elections. At the beginning of the game, we haven't had that option yet, so everybody takes their three cards that they've started with, and you're going to choose one of them that you'd like to play with one of your family members uh, to get them elected. And the way these elections work is just simply that I've chosen a guy, uh, I'll choose one of these cards, and play them both face down. Uh, my opponent does the same thing, and then we both reveal. He says, I've played my four plus one ducat, so that's a total of five. I've played my four also but plus two ducats. So I win the election and my character becomes the first doge. Uh, everything that was played gets discarded and this four is out of the game because it has been played. Uh, the only one of your cards that you get back is your one. So you can always play your one our newly elected doge is going to get a number of these little doge hat tokens. Uh, if you're playing a two-player game, he gets four. If you're playing a game with three or four players, he only gets three. Once you've had your first election, everything is set up and ready to go. Uh, the doge starts by rolling all these action dice. And then we just go ahead and put them in their little boxes, and everybody's going to get to choose action dice, one after the other. Uh, the doge makes the first decision, and these action dice are our basic mechanic in the game. Um, each of them behaves a little bit differently. Uh, on these dice, you're going to see numbers, uh, so here we have a two and it has this uh, card that is uh, empty. Uh, here we've got a three, and here we have a four with a card that's filled in. Anytime you see the two with an empty card, that means that you get two action points to spend, and you'll get to draw one card. Uh, the three means that you get three action points to spend, and then you get four action points, but everyone else gets to draw a card. Uh, so that's what this iconography on the dice means. Um, everyone else draws, you draw. Okay, so we have everything set up. Uh, the doge has rolled the dice, and now we come to the start of the doge's first turn. Uh, the doge always begins by taking one of these little hats off of their character card that's up here, and they either get to keep this and it's worth one victory point at the end of the game, or they can immediately discard it. You have to make this choice when you take the uh, hat off of your character. Either keep it for one victory point, or you discard it, and when you take your die here in a moment, you're going to get plus one action point to spend. So taking these dice is the primary action mechanic in the game. Uh, our turn sequence begins by making sure that we still have dice here. If we don't, then we have to draw one of these threat cards. Uh, and these are going to cause various uh, empires and kingdoms to rise in these various locations around the board. Uh, that's what these shield tokens that we have are. So we might have uh, you know, the Republic of uh, 
Genova get uh, founded. Next, I'm going to take one of these action dice, uh, and each type of action die behaves a little bit differently. Um, you can see that they have different symbols on them here. We've got a number, and then uh, on these two we have a card uh, silhouette. Uh, the number tells you how many action points you get to spend, uh, two, three, or four. An empty card like this means that you get to draw a card. A filled in card means that everyone else gets to draw a card. So here at the beginning of the game, uh, let's say that I'm gonna take this merchant action, uh, which gives me three action points, and I'm going to uh, hang on to my doge hat for one victory point at the end of the game. So I get to take three actions. You're gonna spend your action points in Venetia to spread your influence across the Mediterranean. Uh, and influence is gonna be represented by these cubes that we've got. Uh, it's very important to remember that you're always tracing a sea route to locations because this is a game about maritime trade. So I'm gonna start by placing one cube here in the Gulf of Venice. And you can see that this sea route says that it requires one. I've now placed one cube here. This means that now Venice has taken control of this region in the seas. Uh, we get to remove the cubes, and we place one of these tokens on the board to indicate that Venice is now in control of this region. Instead of starting from Venice, uh, now whenever we place these influence cubes, uh, we can start from any of these sea spaces that Venice has taken control of with these markers. Uh, I have two more actions to spend. And the merchant die requires that I spread out my influence as much as possible. So I might place one here and one here. Uh, I cannot place two in the same location unless I have a card that lets me break the rules. Um, I've taken a yellow die, so I could play this yellow card that's in my hand, which says that I can place two influence in one colony if I would like. Uh, I'm not going to play that card. I'm going to go ahead and spread my influence out, though. My opponent then gets to take their die. Uh, so we do the same thing. We check to see, are there dice still here? If there aren't, we need to draw a threat card. He'll take this three political die, uh, which is brown. Um, so likewise, he gets to place three influence cubes. Uh, my yellow die has been discarded. Political dice are the exact opposite of the merchant dice. Uh, where the merchant dice require me to spread my influence out, political dice require me to concentrate my influence. Uh, so I might drop all three of my influence cubes here in this colony. Uh, we've already got a sea route, so I don't have to deal with the seas. And you can see that these colonies also have numbers, just like the sea spaces do. Uh, this tells us how much influence we need to wield in this colony in order for Venice to take control there. Uh, so placing three cubes in this one spot means that now Venice controls this colony, and that means that we get to elect the city official there, uh, one of these little Podesta hats. Uh, the election is just whoever has the majority of cubes in that space. So here we've got three red cubes in a place that requires at least three cubes. So red gets to place a little Podesta hat here in this colony. Uh, whenever we place one of these tokens, our white marker moves forward. Whenever we place a Podesta hat, our white marker moves forward. If we remove one of these tokens for any reason, it moves back. So that has finished that turn up. We come back around to the Doge, remove one of these hat tokens, uh, this time I'm going to go ahead and discard it, and that'll mean I get plus one action on my turn. I'll go ahead and take this two military action die. I get to draw an action card because this is indicating that for me. And I need to make the decision immediately, do I put this card into my hand, or do I place it under my family's crest so that 
when we have our next Doge election, however many ducats are on this card get added to my value. Uh, so I've got two military actions, uh, but because I discarded my hat, I get a third one. Military actions are going to be different again. Uh, here is where we're going to need these military tokens. I get to declare a place that I want to invade effectively. Um, so let's say I'm going to conduct military operations here in this colony. Uh, for one action point, I get to draw one of these military tokens. So I've drawn one out of my bag, and it's a two uh, with this border. Two tells me that I get to place two cubes there. Um, so for one of my military action points, I've placed two cubes. The border around it, though, tells me that we have to draw one of these threat cards. So, uh, so we're going to draw one of these threat cards, and it tells me that in Africa we're going to found one of these kingdoms. Um, we determine which kingdom based on which epic we're currently in. So we're in the first epic, so it's going to be the top shield. If we're in the second epic or third epic, that would just move us down. Um, Africa is going to get this green shield icon to indicate that now there is a foreign kingdom controlling that region. And it tells us that here in the Mar de Levant, we're placing an enemy fleet. Um, these are just on the back side of these Venice control tokens. So we just put one of these over here and we're done with this card. If we were in our second epic and we placed this shield instead, uh, this black cross symbol tells us that the black pawn moves forward one space. That doesn't happen during the first epic, only in the second epic once our white pawn advances to this filled in marker. This token that we drew uh, is going to get set aside until the end of my turn, uh, and then it'll go back in the bag. Um, but it doesn't go back in while I'm still drawing tiles for this turn. Uh, you can see that my military action has caused us to place three cubes here total now. So that means that Venice now controls this colony and I get to place one of my little Podesta hats there. Uh, for my second military action, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and invade here. I'll reach into my bag. And this time I got zero. Uh, so that was just a wasted action. I don't get to place anything there. Um, and this one is out of the bag. Uh, for my third one, um, I could attack this location again. Uh, for the sake of explanation, though, I'm going to invade here. And remember that I'm getting a third action because I discarded my doge hat that I took uh, at the start of the turn. Um, so I'll go ahead and invade this colony where we have a podesta. Uh, because I'm taking military action against a city where we have a city official, uh, I'm going to get this infamy token, uh, which is going to be a problem for me later in the game. Uh, so we'll come back to that in just a little bit. This last military action uh, has a picture of a card on it. Um, this card I don't get to look at. I just draw it and I put it under my family crest over here. So it's going to come into effect uh, when we have our next election. I don't get to place any cubes there. So this is done. Uh, my military action turn is done, so I'm going to pick up all three of these tokens that I drew and put them back into my military token bag. That's how each of these types of dice works. Uh, we can now, uh, let's just jump ahead a little bit here. Um, we'll go ahead and place a few cubes just real fast. Uh, I'll place... Three red cubes here in this location. Uh, and that means that we take control. Um, we've now got three Podesta hats and one of these tokens onto the board, so we should be on our fourth space. Um, so I forgot to move that forward once. Um, one of the things that's nice about uh, the turn marker is you can always kind of recount real fast to see if you forgot to move him once. Um, just one, two, three, four spaces. One, two, three, four. Um, so.
So Red's gained control of another colony here uh, with that political action that they took. Um, I'll take one of my Doge hats. Um, I'll discard it again. And I'll take the other three uh, so that I get to place four cubes. And we'll go ahead and do this here. Okay, so as you can see, we have eight cubes now in this colony. Um, no colony can ever have more than six cubes in it. If you do have more than six cubes, riots start in the city. When there's a riot, each player removes one of their cubes. You then check to see if there are now six cubes or fewer. There are, so the riots have ended. There is, however, now a new majority. So this Podesta gets removed, which means technically we move down one. But a new Podesta comes out because we have majority here, so it moves right back up. So you don't have to move it when you switch Podestas, when you oust a Podesta, uh, as the rules use the terminology. Um, but you don't advance it because another Podesta has come out. Um, one Podesta left and a new one came in, uh, so the marker doesn't actually move anywhere. Uh, it's just important to remember that uh, you're not advancing it too quickly because people are ousting each other. Um, I've gained control of that city, and then we go back to the next player. Um, he's going to take this two mercantile power and draw a card for himself. Um, and uh, he'll keep this card because that's pretty good. Um, he'll go ahead and play it, in fact, because uh, he's taking a mercantile dice action right now. Um, so he's going to play this card that allows him to draw one of these victory point tiles that we've got. Uh, these are numbered 1 to 3, and they're secret information. So he's going to draw, he's got this 2. Uh, this card tells him to just put it face down on the card, and he'll score it when we get to our scoring phase. Uh, he's going to take his 2 actions and just drop two cubes on the board. Uh, he'll go ahead and solidify his control there and he could place it here. Um, we'd start a new riot. Each of us would remove one cube and I would still have control uh, with five cubes in that space and three of them being blue. That's not really useful, uh, so he's instead going to use that next one to go ahead and drop a cube out here uh, to start expanding our sea reach. Uh, that makes it me, and I'm going to take the last of my hats and the last of the dice. Uh, so I've got four military actions. He gets to draw another card. Uh, which will go over to him, and let's say this time he decides to go ahead and tuck it under here. Uh, that's not a card he feels like using. Uh, I've got four military actions. Um, I'm actually going to go ahead and discard this hat and take five um, and have a ridiculously uh, risky military turn. Uh, so we'll see what happens. Uh, we get two... Shuffle up our tokens again, and I'm going to attack this naval region because I want to expand our uh, reach out here into the Mediterranean. Um, I get to draw a card that goes under my thing, so I'm going to do very well for the Doge election. Um, this stays out. Uh, I've still got four more draws. I'm going to do the same thing. I get to place zero. Uh, I've still got three more draws. I'm going to do the same thing again. <laughs> I got the other zero. Uh, I think there are two zeros, uh, and then like four of the twos where you draw, um, and like two ones. Um, okay, well, I drew a one with my fourth one, which means I get to place one cube. Uh, that means that we now control this region because we have two cubes there.
Um, I was going to go ahead and continue trying to expand out into my navy uh, so that we could try to go fight this fleet uh, this turn, but that was just such an inept series of military conquests that I think I'm going to go ahead and attack this major port here instead. Um, you can see that uh, there are ports that require three, and then each region has one port that requires four. Uh, this is the major city in that area, and then these are all the minor settlements, if they have three. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and attack this major settlement here, and we'll see how many cubes I get to place. Uh, I get to place one cube, and we have to draw a conflict card. Um, that's all five of my actions. So I can put those back in this bag and set it aside. And draw one of these threat cards for us to deal with. Um, so it tells us that here in Greece, uh, we're going to found a kingdom. Uh, so we find the correct shield. We're going to drop it here in the Greece shield space. Uh, and it tells us that we also have an enemy fleet here in the Mare Libico. Uh, so now we have this enemy fleet that we could go fight on our next set of turns. Um, we get to the end of my turn, and there are no more hats on our doge. So this doge is no longer in power. We need to hold an election at the end of the turn. For our election... Each player is going to choose one of their uh, cards from their family again and add to it the ducats that they have over here under their family crest. Um, you'll get to draw these cards and you get to take three of them and use up to three of them to add to your uh, election value. I have this infamy token. Uh, because I attacked a place that has a Podesta. That means that I am required to play my one. I don't have any other choice because I'm infamous as a family right now. He looks at his cards and he decides, okay, yeah, I'm gonna, you, I'm, I'm not gonna bother using this card uh, because he knows that I'm using my one and he feels reasonably confident. Uh, for me, these cards that I have tucked away, uh, when I pick them, pull them out and look, I have five that I could contribute to this election. Um, the highest card that he could be playing is his six. Uh, I could equal a six, one plus the five. Uh, so, I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm just going to spend all three of these on the election because I want to try to maintain control. He decides, you know, that's probably not worth my time. Do I want to do this? I'm going to reveal my card. Okay, so he has sent out his five. My one plus his five becomes the new doge. Um, this card gets discarded. If he had played his six, uh, we would have a tie. And as the last doge, I would get to choose who the new doge was. Um, I'm going to choose myself, obviously, because why wouldn't I? Um, these cards that I used go in the discard. Uh, we place four doge hats on our doge again. And that's the end of this round. So we come back around to the start. There are no dice. So we draw one of our threat cards. Um, this one tells us that the Kingdom of Jerusalem has been founded uh, over here in the Levant. Uh, after we've played this uh, threat card, now we get to re-roll the dice. and set up our possible action choices again. Um, as the doge, I remove one of my little doge hats, um, either keep it or discard it. I'll go ahead and discard it again. Um, and this time, I'm going to take a military die again. So I have four military actions. Uh, I want to try to 
take this naval region real fast. I get to place two. Okay, so I have been victorious against them. This token gets removed. Uh, because I was victorious, I get to draw one of these victory point tiles from my little bag for that. Um, I drew a three, so I'm going to keep that one secret over here. We had our election, so I get to discard this uh, infamy token. I no longer have that. So that was my first action. I've still got four more. Um, I'm going to try to take this uh, C region so that uh, we can try to start dealing with these kingdoms that are out here attached to it because we need to be able to trace C routes to them to do anything. Uh, so I'll go ahead and draw zero. One, and then I have one more that I get to draw, uh, which is a zero. Um, bad luck for draws for me. Um, those go back in the bag and go off to the side. We drew one threat token, so we'll need to do threat. Um, this one is also in Africa. Uh, so we're gonna have a change of regime here in Africa. The dynasty changes. And my hard work clearing this naval region is undone by that card. Uh, okay, so I have uh, changed our board state a little bit to just uh, show you a couple of things real fast. Um, as you can see, uh, Venice controls all the way down here into the Mare Libico now. Uh, we've you know, come in and wiped out that enemy fleet that spawned. And uh, now we can negotiate with these kingdoms. So uh, we'll say uh, it's Red's turn. They might take uh, this political die, uh, which allows you to negotiate with other kingdoms that you can reach by sea routes. So, we can trace a path to Africa's colonies from our sea route, and we can trace a path to Greece's colonies from our sea route. So we're now able to negotiate with each of these kingdoms. Uh, we cannot negotiate yet with uh, the kingdom of Jerusalem, because we don't have access to uh, this seaport that would give us access to their colonies. Uh, so on a political die, he could spend one of his action points to trace a route to Greece and negotiate with them uh, and take that shield, which will be worth one victory point at the end of the game. Uh, he could use the other one to negotiate with Africa uh, for the same reason. Um, and he could place a cube out here. Um, and he sees that I'm over here, so he goes ahead and uh, places a cube there. Uh, let's say that... Uh, on the next turn, uh, we have one of these threat cards come out, and it tells us uh, that in Dalmatia, we're going to place the Byzantine Empire. Uh, when a shield is placed into a location that's associated with colonies where you have cubes, each player loses one cube out of that location. Uh, so... Here along the Dalmatian coast, you know, we're each going to lose one cube uh, and one cube. So in both of these locations now, we no longer have the three that is necessary for Venice to control it. So we each lose our Podesta uh, that is currently there. That means that our round marker is going to move back two spaces uh, because we now have two fewer uh, city councilors out on the board. Um, additionally, uh, this card tells us that an enemy fleet is going to spawn here in the Adriatic. Uh, we don't spawn a fleet if we uh, have a Venetian control marker there. Uh, but we do lose this marker, it leaves the board. So that's also going to move our round marker back one space. So they're in just this one card causes to move three spaces back away from that epic and uh, has undone a significant amount of our work here in uh, 
out as we're moving out as Venice here in the uh, Adriatic. Uh, on my next turn, I could negotiate with the Byzantine Empire and take this shield and uh, go ahead and place influence in these places again to reclaim uh, our control in those places so that we could have Podesta hats again. Uh, but uh, you can see how uh, these threat cards are going to shift the mechanics of the game and uh, change this board state really quickly. Uh, the last thing we need to talk about is scoring. Uh, so let's say we do go ahead and fix that. Um, you know, we put out some more Podesta hats. We'll just say that I seize control of a couple of places here uh, over the next turn. Um, well, here, actually, let's uh, let's actually do this real quick, and we'll talk about what happens. Um, let's say I take uh, this four in the merchant uh, deck, and I take my doge hat. Let's say that uh, I want to go ahead and place my influence out there. I'm going to place play this uh, unique trade card that lets me place two of my cubes in each location instead of just one. Um, so I'll drop two here, and I'll drop two here, and I'll drop one here to just make sure that I maintain control in that part of the world. So I'm going to get a new Podesta hat here. Here, we have enough to control it, but we don't have a majority, uh, which is going to make it difficult. Um, we have to have a new majority to place a Podesta hat. So even though we control this, we're equally balanced. So nobody can be the Podesta yet. Um, on his turn, we'll say that he places some cubes. He becomes the Podesta again and places a cube, and places a cube. Uh, we'll just go ahead and skip ahead here now to get to the end of this epic. Uh, we'll go ahead and put out a couple more markers and change this board state. Uh, so here we have a board state that could cause the end of our first epic. Um, we've moved ahead and we have eight uh, of our tokens on the board that count, either these sea space tokens or these Podesta hats, um, that has put us on this white marker on the score track. That is going to tell us that we need to score. Uh, now, for scoring, you're going to look at where you have influence on the board. You get one point of influence for having one cube in a particular area. So we have cubes here in Greece, so we're each going to get one point. Uh, we have cubes here in Dalmatia, so we'll each get one point for that. I have cubes in Italy, so I'll get a point for that. So I score three points and red scores two points. We then get to count our Podesta hats. Um, Podestas are worth two points in minor colonies, and three points in major colonies, the fours. Uh, so this is two, four, um, and then this one's a major colony, so that would be another seven points for blue. Uh, red here has two and three, so that's another five points for red. Uh, we score our victory point tokens, so I score this three that I have, and it goes back in the bag. Uh, he scores this two that he has, and it goes back in the bag, and those will get mixed up. Uh, I score victory points for any doge tokens that I have in front of me. I only have one, so uh, I'm going to put that back in the supply, and I get one point for that. Uh, our shields won't score until the end of the game, so we're going to hang on to these. Um, when we get to the end of the game, you score one point for each unique shield you have. Uh, so if I, at some point in the future, negotiated with uh, the Byzantine Empire a second time. I don't get anything for negotiating a second time. I already got my bonus victory point for this uh, kingdom. That's it. Um, we're going to score here at the end of this first epic. 
Now when we draw those threat cards, those black crosses will cause this pawn to move forward uh, as we continue to place Podestas and uh, take control of C spaces, we'll continue to see this white uh, pawn move forward. Once they get to the same place, that's the end of the second epic. And then the third epic will end whenever this black token eventually makes his way all the way to the end. Um, so that'll just be threat cards. That is everything for how you play Venetia. Uh, there are a couple of optional rules. Uh, you can, at the start of the game, uh, it gives you a few kingdoms that you can set up uh, so that there are already some uh, forces out on the board at the start of the game. Uh, for example, it tells you to uh, establish the Byzantine Empire here in Romania. Uh, it also suggests uh, you can establish this caliphate here in Potente, uh, have a, an enemy fleet that uh, currently controls this sea already. Uh, the main optional rule set, though, uh, deals with this set of doge elections. Uh, rather than taking these cards and putting them under the board like we were doing uh, to get these ducat values, uh, the game also comes with these ducat tokens that you can use. So... When he decided to put this one here, if we were using the optional doge rules, instead of uh, putting this card under the board, he would have discarded it and taken three ducat tokens. Uh, and those he gets to place on one of these six cities uh, that control the voting for the doge. Uh, he discarded a gray card, so he can only place these three ducats in the gray cities uh, here on this side of the board. So let's say that he goes ahead and places all three of his ducats in San Polo, uh, trying to secure some voting there. Uh, we'll just place a few more of these tokens real fast, uh, just to have a theoretical uh, thing set up. And... Yeah, that's good. Uh, you can have any number of ducat tokens out here. Uh, there's no limit on that. Now, when we have a doge election, uh, instead of us taking the cards that are here under this part of the board, since we aren't using that mechanic, uh, we would draw tiles from a bag and those will tell us which of these two cities matters for us in terms of voting population right now. Uh, so we would draw two tiles out of this bag, and those two tiles tell us that Canna Regio uh, matters. So here we go. Uh, he's gonna get these two ducats worth of voting power. And the other one is Dorso Duro, uh, so here I'm going to get one and he's going to get two. Uh, so he's adding three to his power and I'm adding one to my power is how uh, that would play out with these two voting tokens. Um, the voting tokens don't go back into the bag. Uh, you keep them set out. The bag has seven tokens in it. Uh, the last of them is this Quarantia. Uh, this uh, token, if it's the last one in the bag, you add the other six back to it. Uh, if it comes out, it's just a nothing token. Uh, it tells you to shuffle everything back into the bag at the end of that uh, voting round, um, but it won't add anything. Uh, if you place four ducats into one location, so if we say he dropped another one into San Polo on this next turn, you then get to place one of your monuments in that city, uh, which are these tokens. Um, so you would take these four ducats off, and now he has a monument here in San Polo. So this is going to be worth four votes uh, when it's next counted. Uh, if San Polo comes out, 
and it counts as its four votes, then it gets flipped to its other side to indicate that now it's only worth one vote uh, because the people are already impressed with that monument. Um, they've already uh, voted for your family because you did that once. Uh, when you use this optional Doge election rule set, uh, the biggest thing that changes is that the Doge player uh, can choose to discard one of their Doge hat tokens to veto any threat card that gets drawn. So, you know, if uh, we drew a card and I flip it over and I say, oh, it's Dalmatia again, and I say, well, I do not want to deal with that. I don't want to lose my cubes here in Dalmatia again uh, that I just finished putting into place. I can discard one of my Doge hats and this card doesn't happen. Uh, that's basically the, all there is to this uh, additional rule set. Just placing these ducat tokens out on the board, drawing these tiles, and uh, building monuments that then get flipped over to indicate that they are no longer uh, as stunning, as impressive as they were in the beginning. Okay, I'm going to spend that one, because that. that's going to be a while. I don't want that in my hand at all. Okay. Yep. Doge election. Four. Five. Right. Okay. My guy becomes the Doge. Wearing his little hat. Uh, we've got these cards. Roll these dice. <sighs> okay. Military actions. Mercantile actions, and wow. <laughs> yep. Would you like to give me a card? Uh, I guess we're giving each other lots of cards this time. Um, I'm going to take a Mercantile. Take, take, take your Doge hat. Thank you. Take my Doge hat. Uh, I'm going to take a Mercantile die. I'm not going to play a card, though. Uh, so I'll take three actions go one uh, and then I'll go I guess just two and three and that's you Okay, uh, I'll go ahead and take this military one, um, and I'm just going to attack each of these colonies in turn, I think. Uh, I'll start here. Zero. Hmm. Earlier, when I was doing the game uh, explanation, I just kept drawing zero. All right, I place two cubes, uh, which means I get to place a Podesta. Um, and we're going to draw a threat card at the end of my turn. Um, that uh, white marker advances one space because of the Podesta. Um, I'll attack this one. I get to place one cube there. Uh, which is also enough for a Podesta. And then for my last one, I'll attack the other, and zero. Okay. Draw a threat card. Uh, let's go back in here, and I draw a threat card, uh, which says Romania is now the Byzantine Empire. And Mar Ego Egro Egro uh, has an enemy fleet in it. Um, that is it for me. I guess it's Egg Co. Oh, that was your second action. You should have two Doge hats in front of you. Thanks. Sorry. I could take my second one off. Draw a card. Dump everybody there. 
care. Ooh, I get to draw a card. You're so nice. Oh, that's a garbage card. Do you want to put it in your doge Ooh, box? Yeah, I'm going to put it in my doge box. Get that extra voting power. Right. Do you want to give me a card that I'll also I mean... probably put in my doge box? <laughs> Uh, or do you want to take another military and draw a card for yourself? I'm going to take a political action. Uh, so you can have that card. Um, I get my little hat at the start of my turn. I'm going to place one. I also don't think that I told people in the video uh, that you can only place one in a C space in a turn. And that's another thing that I'll need to mention. I wonder where that cube went. Oh, there it is. Uh, I will drop three cubes. I guess here. yourself a card. Ooh, thank you. I got one. And uh, dump my remaining three. Okay. If it really matters. Get a doge. Take my last doge hat and this last die. I'm going to draw this card. Right here. Two military actions. Uh, I guess I'm going to go ahead and attack this place where I have three cubes. Try to install a governor. City official Podesta hound out. I get to draw a card and put it here. And I'll do the same thing a second time. And I get to place one cube and draw a threat card. Uh, but that's enough for a Podesta. Threat card, uh, which is in the Levant. Have the Ayubids uh, and the uh, Mar de Levant. Likewise, that's one. Okay, we elect um, a Doge. Yep, elect a Doge because our Doges are out. Um, I get to take these four cards and I can choose three of them to use. Does the other one come to, to your hand, or like I don't understand like that mechanism? Do you so you get to choose three of them? Like, I can choose up to three of them to play uh, uh, right now as part of the thing, like the money yep. value. So like yep. the other ones just stay there. Yeah. Oh, okay. So I'll just leave them for later. Okay. Um, six. One. Yeah, I figured. He gets four of his own little doge hats in our two-player game. And there, now he's the doge. Uh, at the start of the round, we don't have any dice there, so we draw a threat card. A Dalmatia. Uh, is going to establish the Kingdom of Hungary over here. Uh, so we're each going to lose one cube from here, uh, which means I'm no longer a, Bode a Podesta. You still are a Podesta. Um, and, and you lose another. I lose another Podesta. 
Okay. Any, any pirates on that card? Uh, it's in front of you. Thanks. Uh, no, no pirates. Just okay. the Kingdom of Hungary. Okay. Roll those dice. Uh, yep. Roll these dice and take action. All the same. Wow. All the same. Wow. All the same. Just everything is two and Literally draw everything cards. is the same. These dice are terrible. Yeah. Like, <laughs> take, take your doge hat. Uh, yep. Um, do I want to discard it so I can do three? I guess I'm just going to take two. Um, do this. I get a card. Not helpful. I'm going to place two. Here, I, oh, let's see. Okay, one, I negotiate with uh, Hungary. And then I'll place one so that I can be a Podesta again. Uh, that's you. Uh -huh. So I'm going to do this. Okay. Choose a minor colony and draw a battle tile. I'm going to choose that one. Okay. And try to add that number of influence. Hopefully it's not zero or draw a card. One. Okay. So that's just like a bonus military action, basically? Yeah. We can only attack a minor settlement. Um, and do we have to draw a threat card for it? Place on the colony a number of influence equal to the value on the tile, ignore any other icons. Okay, yeah, so no, uh... But there's a Podesta there now, right? Uh, yes, I now have a Podesta there. Yeah, so now I attack Durazo. Okay. So, uh, you get a card. Attack Durazo. Unfortunate. Um, okay. I get a doge hat. Uh, I'm going to discard it to uh, take an extra action point this turn. Um, Which die are you taking? I'm going to take the political one uh, and I'll just drop three here uh, with a podesta. Uh, that means we're scoring. Um, okay, so... I get two points. Um, yeah, we get two points for presence, uh, because we each have people in Italy and in Dalmatia. Okay, so I'm going to score nine points in Podestas. Oh, no, 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 sorry, this is... That one's two... That one's three, so that's five, so that's seven, uh, so that's nine. Yeah, okay, I was right. Um, you're scoring four points in Podestas. Um, I don't have any victory point tokens. I don't have any victory point tokens. Uh, I have uh, one, two, three, four, five doge tokens, so that's five points. If a player has at least one influence in a region's major colony, he gains a number of victory points equal to the region's value. Okay. Yeah. So you get another point. Yeah, so it's one point for that. Okay. We are now in the second epic, so uh, this token is out. Um, and when we do threat cards, we'll use the second thing instead of the first thing, and the black guy will start moving. Okay.
Okay. I'm drawing two tiles, I'm choosing one. Okay, so I draw two and keep one, and I keep the one. Okay, place one influence. Um, Doge hat. I guess I'm going to take a, uh, I'll take a mercantile die. Use this C. Uh, so I'm gonna drop a guy here in Africa. And I will Are you discarding a doge hat? You've only got two. Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna just do that. I was contemplating if I wanted to discard my doge hat. Do you decide, like, at the start of your turn? Like, I don't know. You decide, yeah, like, when you pick it up, you're deciding if you're discarding it or not. Don't know why it lets me put a victory point token on the card. Nice. So I have a victory point token. Yeah. Oh, one, two. Uh, um, so you already have a C route here. Um, so you can just go to Greece if you want, or you can work on uh, building up our control of this region so that your cubes can't get wiped out later. Can I? Do I have to military those guys to fight them? Uh, yes. Enemy fleets, I think, have to be fought with military. Oh, you can have multiple enemy fleets. We need to remember that. Um, if uh, a yeah. card tells us to put more than one there. Well, it's not so much that as, like, you can stack them. Yeah, yeah, that they stack up. May remove fleet tokens using a military action die. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I'm going to do another one here and uh, one in Malta. Okay. Uh, I'll take this last political die. I get this last doge hat. Um, I get to draw my card. Uh, I don't. I didn't draw a card for my thing, did I? Go ahead and take one. If I did, sorry, but like I wanted I don't one think card in front of me, so I don't think yeah, I did. I don't think you did. I'm gonna put that in my box. Okay. Uh, I will. Uh, go ahead and play a card uh, to banish one of your influence tokens. Um, and then uh, I'm gonna have I'm gonna discard my Doge token that I take this turn uh, to get an extra action and I'll just drop uh, three here so that I become the Podesta there. Um, that doesn't happen. Uh, this guy moves forward. Uh, this guy only moves uh, based on threat cards. Um, that is you. Uh, oh, that's the end of the round. Um, there's no doge hat, so we're going to have an election for a doge. Um, you have these two cards that you can choose to use in the doge elections. Uh, I have these three cards that I could use.
Ooh, I have my uh, mine ready to go. Do you uh, have your? Are you, you playing your cards? Yeah. Okay. One. <laughs> okay. Well, then I become Doge again. <laughs> How much did you spend? I spent eight. Yeah. Put those back in my box. Um, all right, I roll these dice. Um, it's the start of the round and there's no uh, dice in that box. So uh, Italia uh, is going to see the foundation of the kingdom of Aragon. So they move into Italy. Uh, we each lose two cube. We each lose a cube from all our places in Italy, uh, which means that Podesta goes away. Um, so we should have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh -huh. yep. yep, that's where we are. Good. Uh, and we get an enemy fleet here in Martorino. Okay. Um, okay, that's the start. I take a doge hat. Uh, what did we roll this time? Um, so we have a little bit of variety. Um, I'm going to give you a card and I'll take four uh, political. Um, I'll negotiate with Aragon. And then I've got three that I can spend. Um, I'll go ahead and drop them. Where's Dalmatians? Maybe, yeah, that's the major scene. Yeah. I'm going to drop them. Uh, I guess just down here in Sicily. Take one of those mercantile actions. Um, so uh, I'll play this card. I have a Podesta in a major colony. Uh, so I get to draw a victory point token. And then I'll take my three uh, actions. I'm gonna go one here, which is not a new majority. So uh, you continue to be the Podesta there. Uh, drop one here, and I guess I'll drop. Uh, one here. Draw a card. Ooh. Well, I have to put one here. All right. I don't think so, because it says uh, that you can count that space, you can count that cube as a C route for you. 
You don't have to like redo it every round. It doesn't seem like it. Um, I think that the reason we would want to is to get another Venice token out there. Uh, but it seems like that's more of a thing that happens in like the four player game. For those like bigger areas like that. Okay. Unless I'm completely misunderstanding what it says in that section of the rules. But oh. I'm going to double all my four of my guys down here. Okay. Um, so we each lose a cube, and then we're under six, and you take control. Um, okay. Uh, I'm going to take a, a merchant die. Um, I will draw two victory point tokens, and then put one of my victory to point tokens back in the bag. And now I've got three merchant actions. Um, yes, I will drop one here uh, so that I oust your Podesta and install mine. Um, Drop one here and cause us each to lose a cube. Um, and I'll drop one over here in Tripoli. I don't know if you have been taking your hat, so I don't know. I did not really. take my hat that turn. Um, I definitely forgot it that turn. Uh, but this turn will be my last one because I should always run out the same turn that we run out of dice in a two player game. Do you see any reason why you couldn't play that literally anywhere on the board? Choose one minor colony and draw one battle tile. Place on the colony. Nope, it doesn't say you have to like trace a route or anything. All right. You're just hiring some dudes to attack a place. All right, so I'm going to do that up there. Okay. Because why not? Go ahead and draw a military tile and uh, we'll Probably see Probably draw happens. a card and <laughs> don't actually yeah. put, do anything. It doesn't yeah. even matter. Uh, or you'll get to put one out. One. Yeah, put one influence there and uh, then... Instantly, uh, you know, some uh, some of you show up here, and we're gonna have Tartars uh, create a tasty sauce for fish. Okay, so I've got two. Um, we'll attack Malta. Okay. That's the card one. Yep. Your card. Uh, let's get Malta. Zero. Wow, that sucks. I, I, I've lost this game. I've drawn that. Yeah. Both times I took yeah. the battle actions. It so. just happens. Yeah. Um, now I'm going to take battle actions, and we'll see if I, you know, draw well. Um, have a die. Or have a card, rather. Take your doge hat. Yeah, take my doge hat. Do I want to take five military actions? Who cares? <laughs> I'm going to discard this. I'm going to take five military actions. Where are you attacking first? Um, I'm going to attack... Uh, I'm going to work on clearing out some pirates, I think. So uh, I'm going to attack here. And try to get rid of that Byzantine fleet. I succeed. So that's out, and I'll draw uh, a victory point token for my success there. Um, I will drop a cube here. I'll negotiate with the Byzantines. Um, no, that's not that area. No, 
No. I can I can I can trace a C route to one of their colonies, which is what I need to do. To negotiate with them. Um I'll uh I guess I'm gonna go ahead and attack uh, whatever that is. Oh I guess that's part of uh Archipelago, yeah, I guess that's all that's named. Um, okay, so that was uh, three of my five uh, military actions. So I'm gonna attack here and try to uh, establish something. Instead, I'll gain a card. I'll do it again and uh, get another card, great. Okay, uh, that's it for my military actions. Uh, I just need to draw my victory point tile. Um, and a threat card, because uh, there was a threat on that military tile. Uh, this threat card says that Africa is going to get this green shield. Uh, that means that I lose a cube there. Um, but I think that's the only African uh, province where we have... Oh, I guess Malta's African? Yeah, okay. Uh, and we get uh, another uh, enemy fleet over here in the Levant. Uh, that's the end of this round, so we have a Doge election. Are you just putting your one out again? Again in my cards. <laughs> oh, 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 I'm a bad person. It's not green. Uh, we're in the second epic now. Uh, it is uh, this yellow shield uh, that comes out. And that guy moves one space. is Louise cards that I care about. Are you ready? I am. Is it one? It's twelve. Okay. Well, <laughs> then my seven does not get elected. <laughs> Well, that means that you are the Doge. Uh, you get four little hats. Yeah. Give me a hat. Have your first hat, Doge man. Did we? Do we need to do a second threat card? Like, because there was no. Oh, yep, out, so. yep, yep, yep. Do a threat. Um, Greece is going to get uh, a new kingdom here. Good. Uh, so I lose. That's that. not Greece. Oh, is it not? No. Oh, it's not. This is Greece down here. Uh, okay, yeah. So we each lose one there, uh, which means you're no longer the Podesta there because we need four. Um, that moves back one. Pirates? Um, pirates in Mare Libico. How many spaces for this? Not that. One space. So like I have to take military, don't I? Because like we can't. Oh, I guess I can like put something here. But yeah, otherwise... you could. Yeah, you could take like political or mercantile and spend it here in the Adriatic. Okay. Oh. 
We're not doing that. So, one to fight these pirates. Okay. You succeed. You okay. will get a uh, victory point token at the end of the round, and we'll draw that uh, threat card at the end of the round. Uh. Do one down here. Oh, wait, now I have to put a cube down here, right? Yeah. So that's two, two three. for a cube. And then you're going to attack there. Okay. Oh, or can I attack the Grecian flag? Like, how does that work? Oh, yeah, you could spend your, your point to negotiate with uh, this kingdom uh, that has been founded. Do, and... I, do I need to draw a token for that, or do I just take it? You just do it. Okay. Um, the Despotat of the Morka. Yeah, that's fine. All right, uh... I draw a victory point, you draw a threat card. Yep, uh, I threw the threat card there next to you, and uh, that victory point, so... Uh, that threat is in Romania, uh, the Ottoman Empire. Um, this guy moves one. No pirates. Uh, there are, in fact, pirates here oh. again. So, there we go. Uh, okay. What do I want to do? Um, I'm going to take Mercantile. Uh, can I play a card from my hand here? I'm going to play another copy of this card that lets me draw two victory points and uh, put one of my victory point tokens back. Um, and that's one where I can discard to draw a victory point. Or is uh, that not that one? Those. Oh, oh, I'm actually going to give you uh, the victory point that I discard. Mm. Um, so here you can have this nice fancy one that I'm going to discard, uh, and I'll keep those ones. Um, okay, so now I've got three merchant actions. Um, I'm going to go ahead and... So I'll drop one here, one here, and uh, negotiate with them. That's it. Uh, you get a doge hat. And don't forget that you can choose to discard it for extra action points. One extra action point. Remove all enemy fleets from one sea area, place one influence in that area, and draw one victory point token. Cool. Okay, you wipe those guys out, you put a victory point, you put a influence in, and... Uh, he was on... He was on the two, so if you didn't move him down, then you didn't move him down, but, like, he was on the two. Um, it looks like he should have moved four spaces. Like, I don't know how you would verify that. Uh, based on the... Like, have you been keeping track of when cards have been in the second epic and not the first? Uh, I know because I negotiated with this kingdom. Which came out in the second epic. Right. So everything on top of it is a card that we've drawn since then. Uh, but the Serbians never came out, so... We'll uh, start keeping a separate discard pile for that so that we can verify our count at any point that we need to. 
Okay. I don't know if I took my hat. That's fine. Uh, I threw you one at the start. Right. Um, um, let's see. There's a whole lot of guys down there in Crete. I wasn't even paying attention. What did you do? Oh, you did a political action. Okay. Uh, I'll let you draw a card. I'm going to take four uh, political. Um, I'll drop one here in the Levant. Uh, negotiate with these guys. And I'll drop two here on Cyprus. You get a hat. Put that in my box. Okay. times you get to do it three okay there's one oh that's probably what this box is for is to put down your threat cards that are gonna get drawn at the end of the round three influence okay um the threat card uh the republic of genova gets founded Yep, in Torino. Um, nothing affects us there. Uh, the black guy moves one space. And we've got another uh, fleet to deal with there. So I'm going to take this political die. Let's get a card. Um, I'm going to assassinate your doge and discard this. So we'll uh, actually do an election at the end of this turn. Um, and with my two, I'm going to drop drop two here and my little podista. Um, okay, so that's end. Um, we elect a doge. Like this. Ready. <laughs> okay. Just one? One. Okay. I become the doge. Four of them doge hats. Put that back in my box. That's in your box. Um, and then that's the start of your turn.
forfeit my action points this turn to place an influence on a colony anywhere on the board. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, even if an empire suddenly founds there, you'll still have one influence, I guess. Um, okay. Uh, threat card. Threat card happens because there's nothing there. Uh, okay, well, there is still a Republic of Genova. Um, and that guy moves two spaces this time. Pirates? No more pirates. Um, okay, I'm rolling dice. Chat. Uh, I will sacrifice my doge hat uh, for an extra action. Um, I'm going to take a three and I'll drop four cubes here in Alexandria, uh, causing a riot, and we each lose a cube. Um, and then uh, I become the Podesta of Alexandria. Fight those pirates. Okay. Uh, it's just like uh, the number just means that I won, right? It doesn't matter, or like I don't actually know because I've never done that. Before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you're if you're attacking pirates, you just need to get a number. Okay. And I also use my second point to take this. Okay. Um, you get a victory point tile because you fought pirates. Threat token. Yeah. Card. And a threat card happens. Uh, the Spanish are going to show up. Uh, in... So if I have okay. more than three, it's just I choose three when we do scoring? Yeah, that's my understanding. Um, and he's going to move two spaces. The end of yours. I take a Doge hat. Uh, do I want to sacrifice it again? Uh, yeah, I'll go ahead and sacrifice it again. Um, I'm going to take this one. You'll get a card. Um, I'm going to take five military actions. I'm going to play Venetian Arsenal so that this die uh, goes back to the pool. Um, you want to pass me that military bag? Let's see. Five military actions. Um, Okay, I'm going to attack uh, Tripoli first and see if I can get uh, my influence there that I need. I do, okay. I will draw a threat card. Happen at the end of this round. Um, I will... Um, I'm going to attack, uh... Jury Infamy, sucker! I will. 
Um, yeah, I'm gonna attack there. Get a card. Uh, I'll do it again. I'm just gonna do that again for all three of my remaining ones, unless something changes significantly. Place two. Uh, I'm gonna check and see if a riot happens immediately, real quick. If at any time the number of influence tokens uh, six, there's a riot. Okay. Again. Draw a threat card. Oh, yeah. Thanks. Um, and then I can do it one more time. No, that was three. I have four on my card and I spent a doge, so I have five. Um, five total. Uh, I spent one here and then I spent four here. Or spent three here. I don't. I don't know what to tell you. You said I'm going to do this the next three times, and you've done it three times there. So I have not been keeping track of your whole turn because I don't I care. I have one more military token still, because um, I only have four sitting here. Right, well, that's a zero. Um, okay, these two threat cards happen. I did not accomplish any of my goals. You <laughs> caused a riot. Yeah. Um, and you became infamous. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the uh, two. <laughs> Ottomans are marching down here into Greece. Uh, That's so... not Greece. Yeah, anyway. This is Greece. Uh, so we each lose one there. Um, I removed that. Then you put the pirate card down, though. So where are the pirates at? Uh, at Libico. Uh, there are pirates. Um, and yeah, it was two spaces for the black guy. Yep. Um, the Republic of Genova is still, oh no, has now uh, also shown up here. Right. Um, that's one and uh, Mar Nepo, or Nero, this is the Black Sea. There we go. Oh, they're so close to each other. Let's do a quick count just to make sure. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve spaces. Yeah. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Yep. Okay. We are exactly where we should be. That's you, and... So I don't even... Okay. I don't even want that shield that showed up there, because I already have it. Oh, yeah, with the Ottomans. Yeah. Um, so the only reason that you would negotiate with the Ottomans is to prevent me from negotiating with the Ottomans. Don't... I don't think it matters. Well, I don't care, so. Okay. Um, that's going to cause us to score. Yeah, who cares? Um, does it, do I finish putting my cubes yeah, down? Yeah, finish putting your cubes okay. down. We'll score at the end of the round. Uh, it doesn't, I can't, like, put my guys anywhere else that matters, so, like, they're going to, you know, chill out here. Okay. It's not, it's yep. fine. And here. Okay. Okay. Okay, so we score. Um, 
we each score two points for Dalmatia. We each score two points for Italy. Or one point for Italy. Wait, wait, wait. So everybody gets one point for having presence in a colony. Yeah. So you and I will both get a point for being present in Italia. We'll yeah. both get a present for being present in Dalmatia. Um, I have uh, influence in the biggest colony in Dalmatia, which means I get points for it instead. No, I think you get as well. That's how we scored it last time. Okay. So I think it's just one. I don't think we score both here. Okay, so you have... One fewer points from last time. Yep. Alright, I'm present in Greece, so... But I'm also in the big cities. I mean, I get one or two points, because I'm in the biggest city. You have the biggest city. So uh, I get the so, value of Greece. Yeah, we're gonna get the value of Greece, because it's in a major colony. Um, so we both score that. Okay. Um, we'll both we're score both Africa. Africa for two points. Um, I'll score the Levant for two points. Uh, you'll score uh, Tartaria for three points. Okay, that's presence. And now... Now we do Podestas. Um, it's two points for minor settlement, Podestas. Um, so I'm going to score... Two, four, six, eight, ten uh, for Podestas there, uh, plus three, three, and three. Um, and you'll score two, four, uh, seven. Victory point tokens. Uh, we each score our three highest value victory point tokens, and then all victory point tokens go back in the bag. Uh, so I'm scoring seven points in victory point tokens. Uh, and we score our doge hats, um, which I'm scoring five of. Okay, that's the end of the second epic. Um, we move into the third one, and now the game ends when the black pawn reaches the white space at the end of that track. Mm -hmm. um, Take your hat. Yeah, I couldn't remember which of us had just gone. Um, okay, I'm taking this. Uh, I'll take the military action, and you can have a card. Go ahead and fight uh, those pirates. Um, okay, I defeat those guys, and I'll draw a victory point tile at the end of the round. Um, I'll spend one uh, to negotiate with the Ottomans. Uh, I have two left. Um, I will attack Crete again. A card. And for my last one, I'll... Place one cube in Crete. Which is not enough to trigger a riot or a change of leadership. And here's those tiles. Draw a victory. 
entry point token. Okay. Watch you. I possess a major colony, draw a victory point token. Uh, I take my little, cadet, my little uh, doge hat. I'm going to place three actions. Um, oh, I guess uh, when I... Uh, when I was doing my military actions, I needed to have placed one of my cubes there, so I just drew to one one too many times, but the last one was a zero anyway, so it doesn't matter. Um, right? I don't care. It was either a zero or a one. I, I don't care. I think it was a one. I'm going to remove this cube from here. Um, and then... We may or may not have made a mistake, and I don't care. Yeah, I, I think that I just uh, did that wrong. Um, and then I placed two cubes here uh, with my political action. Um, Vote for a guy. Yep. Here's your card that you can use. Enjoy your one, sucker. Um, yep. You play I'm, all your cards with I'm, your one. I'm infamous. Oh. Uh I've decided on what I'm playing. Okay. Go! One. I played uh, three. So. Well, then you are the new Doge. Uh, this guy's out of here. Um, you're in. You get four little Doge hats. I have to take this three. Yep, and that three is yours. Give me a hat. Here's your first Doge hat. Uh, do you want to turn that three into a no. four? No. Dump everybody here and get a place. Okay. This moves, but I don't think it matters anymore. It doesn't. Yeah, the white guy is completely meaningless at this stage. Um. Okay. Uh, then we come back around. There are no dice there, so we get a threat card. Oh, we didn't reveal my threat card from... Uh, oh, from whoever knows when we did that. Um, I'm going to move that black guy once. Um, okay, so... The Ottoman Empire got founded here. Great. Um, this guy moves forward three spaces. Uh, instead of two? Instead of one. So he moves two more. There you go. Um, I'm going to take a merchant one, and I'll play unique trade so I can place two cubes in one place. I'll drop two cubes here. We each lose a cube. Um, and that means that I become the Podesta there. Oh, am I out of Podestas? Guess you can't Podesta anymore. Weird. Okay. Do you want to re... re I guess. Go ahead and, I guess go ahead and put your guy back there. I don't know what the hell it means that I can't have more Podestas. Means that you have no purpose for the rest of the game. I guess. Um... So trying to like strengthen your existing podestas. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. Well, I've played unique trade, so I can put two cubes in one place, I guess. Uh, weird. Okay. Um, I'm gonna go here with one. I'll go here. And also there. Because that'd be three. Yes. So you don't want to play your card? No. Okay. No, I don't see any reason to play my card for it, for doing what I'm doing. Since I can't uh, have more uh, city councilors, I guess I'm just spreading have. influence now. We both have the autos. Yeah, we so both have cares? autos now. Yeah. I think it tells you a 
if the supplies are limited. Well, they clearly are because there are only so many pieces. Yeah. I'm mostly curious, like, what happens if I run out of influence cubes? You just don't play the yeah, game just anymore. Don't do just anything. Make just the sit game. here. Yeah. I also wonder if you can like move influence cubes in that situation. It's good. Yeah. Um. I'm gonna take uh, three military actions. Um, Don't touch my hats. I wasn't sure if I gave you a doge hat at the start of that round or not. Um, let's see. I'm gonna attack. Uh, I'm gonna attack here where we've got our our two cubes now. You don't want to attack those pirates? Oh yeah, why not? Um, actually, why not? I'm gonna attack uh, these. Oh, pirates. double pirates. Oh, oh, I guess we uh we go one. No. You like going through here. I don't know that we are allowed to. It's like really unclear where you're allowed to go on that part of the map. Okay. Um So you've got two military. Yeah, I've got two military actions that I can take. Fight pirates and pirates. Yep. Um here we go. Pirates defeated. Uh try to fight some more pirates. Uh, defeated. Okay, I'm gonna draw two uh, victory point tiles. And a threat card. And a threat card. Um, the Barbary Coast uh, is happening here in Africa. Oh, uh, good. There's this and this. And that time I lose a Podesta. Okay, now I have Podesta's back. Uh, the guy moves two. And Mare Libico is once again locked down by the Barbary Pirates. <laughs> I've drawn my victory point tiles. You get a Doge hat and uh, take your die. I guess I'm just gonna... Just yeah. Take this three. I drop all three of them right there. Oh man. Get a Podesta. Uh, okay. Um. I'm gonna take three and put them. Go one and negotiate with each of these powers. Your last Doge hat. I'm in the military and draw a card. I'll fight these pirates. Okay. Zero. I'm gonna fight those pirates. And threat card. Okay. Uh, you get a victory point tile out of the bag for defeating pirates. Um, threat card. <laughs> Does not advance the track. Uh, the Ottomans show up and uh, beat these guys up. <laughs> uh, you lose that cube. Um, yeah. The Ottomans are just on a rage. They have an election. Yep. Six. One. Okay. I was hoping you were going to play your six and uh, then vote against my guy. Uh, okay. I need four doge hats. Guy. 
Draw a threat card. Oh, wait. No. No. Still that one. Yep, I'm going to take that last die. Yeah. Um, it's just screwy now because I assassinated you that one time. Um, I get to draw an action card. Sure. Um, I'm going to take two. Uh, I'll banish one of your cubes. Sure, do it. I don't um, care. Any cube. Doesn't matter. Yeah. Uh, I'll banish one of your cubes here. So that there's now a new majority. And I control there. Uh, place two influence cubes. Go one on one. No, no, it's a political action, so I have to put them all in place. Um, I'm going to drop them there, I guess, since that's the place that's the most valuable to me. Uh, then. Uh, I needed to remove one of these. Um, then there's nothing there. We draw a threat card. Uh, the Ottomans have shown up to kick us out of Archipelago. Uh, that's not Archipelago. That's Romania. Okay. So where you just threw us out is fine. So oh. This is Archipelago. You're right. So I guess these ones. We lose one each. Yeah, we lose one each. So we're still there. Yeah. Um, and you no longer have enough people there to have a Podesta. Uh, and that pawn moves one space. Roll the dice. Out of three. Yeah. Threes. Threes. And one of everything. So I have to... If I want to go up to that lake in the top corner, I have to spend one... You'd have to negotiate with them, yeah. But like I have to spend one in the water first, and yes. then another one, and then one to them. negotiate. Yep. Um, if, you want to, if you wish to I hasten don't... the end of the game, military actions will cause conflict cards to come out. I do wish to hasten the end of the game. Um, let's uh, let's do that. Let's like military. yeah, you could just like keep militarying and just keep drawing tokens. Yeah, let's just just do that. Um, it's military right here. Okay. Win. Okay, that's one. You get to put a podesta in. Where would you like to attack now? I don't care. Um, um let's attack up here. Yep, that's Romania. One. Let's attack there again. Card. Okay. So you get a card. Threat I... card resolves. Yeah. Uh, the pawn moves two spaces. Uh, the Ottomans take Archipelago again. Uh, huh. Which yeah. is this. Yeah. So, so you lose one cube there. Um, and, uh, we get kicked out of this, uh, sea. Okay. Um, Take a hat. Um, I'll take uh, a merchant action, um, and this time I'll use unique trade. Uh, I'll uh, discard this doge hat that I take at the start of the round so that I have four to spend. And I can place two and two because of that. Read the wording of the card again. Uh, discard during this turn, you may place up to two influence in the same colony. 
I think that implies you can only do it in one colony, but, like, that's up to debate. But, like, that's how I've interpreted that card, mm-hmm. is, like, you get to do it one time. Because otherwise it's... I interpreted it as, like, you just have the ability to put two influence in places instead of one influence. It doesn't say colonies. I suppose that's true. Um, I don't care, so that's fine. i just be there instead. Okay. Well, we're probably going to just roll this along. Um, any place where that would be cool? Um, yeah, why not? Let's do, let's do a political action. Put our cubes just there. Have a Podesta. Yep. Put this Podesta down. I'm going to play that to uh, discard a military die instead of the die that I took and draw a victory point token. Hmm. Interesting. I don't know that it's interesting. It means I'm going to get one or two points. It could be three points. One or two points. <laughs> um, I just thought it was interesting because I thought you were going to use that military die to hasten the end of well, the game. I didn't because I got yeah. one or two points. That's fine. Uh, I will take, uh, this other, uh, mercantile die, and I'll play Market of Rialto, so I'll draw two victory point tokens and keep one of them. You have the option of discarding an action card to draw a victory point token. I guarantee I have a card that doesn't matter, so... Yeah, sure, we'll discard that. And I'm taking three merchant actions. I am legitimately out of influence cubes, though, uh, which is obnoxious. Sorry, sorry, sorry. sorry. I, I need to pick that token back up and there. That's what you do with that. All right. Uh, well, okay, I uh, have placed every influence token I have on the board, and... Uh, I was like, that's a bummer for you. I guess I'm going to do that. Well, I don't even have any Podesta hats. Yep. Okay, I guess I'm putting a, putting a cube here. Yeah, why not? Um, yeah, okay. That's, uh, that's it. That's you. Um, I didn't take my hat. Um, I legitimately don't know what I'm supposed to do now. You don't do anything. You're out of cubes, you're out of pieces, you just can't do anything. Like, I don't, I don't have to tell you, like, they didn't include enough cubes for you to, like, continue doing any actions, so... Yes. Like, this is just not made for two players in any way. Yeah. This, that's what you've just discovered, is that, like, it just, you run out of pieces and... Like, I, I think the context is that I'm supposed to do something to make you get your cues back, but I'm not going to, yeah. so... Yeah, you're supposed to, like, cause riots to push me out of places. Yeah. I have no intention of doing that, so... I see. <laughs> yeah, so... Uh... Prepare yourself for a political action. Yeah. Uh, two and a key card. Huh. that anymore because I've been kicked out of the place. So 
actually pretty crappy. Oh, on my turn, I couldn't uh, do what I was doing uh, because I had to drop one of my cubes there first. Okay. Yeah. Let's see routes. Yeah, so I think I actually like do like Yeah, you nothing. have to like do that first. One and one. Okay. Who cares? I'll take my doge hat. Uh, Take That's four in a card That's a for four. me. Four. Yeah. Um, I'll take a three then, uh, since I can't use these actions anyway. Uh, I'll negotiate with the Barbary Pirates. Um. That's the only thing I can do on a board without cubes. Um. The rules do not say if they're supposed to be limited, so I'm going to assume that they are limited. Fun. Um, yep. So, I guess uh, that is you after uh, I don't take two actions. Yeah, but like we elect a. Yeah, election guy happens. First. Um, here's the card that you have uh, available. Neat. Um, one. Six. Time to shine, Pregato. Uh, four little doge hats here. Give me one. Draw a threat card. Oh, well, not quite yet. Yeah. Draw a card for yourself. Ooh, thanks. Yeah, hope you can do something with it. Or political actions. Okay. Draw a threat um, card. Yep, threat card happens. Roll those dice, Mr. Doge. Uh, Austria Hungary is going to show up in Dalmatia uh, and advance that uh, pawn two spaces. Okay. Um, the Mare. Got two cubes back. You got three cubes back. Yeah. Like they just worked all the way up and down that coast. Yeah. Would you like just military and military and in the I game? Mean, yes, that's what I'm going to do is military. But you've got three cubes you could put down again. Yeah. So I'm going to take four. Uh, here you can have a card. Good. Um, uh, I mean, I guess I'm going to fight these pirates. Okay. Because they're in my way. I don't have any Podesta hats, so I can't Podesta anywhere anyway. I'm great zero. I guess I'm going to do that again. Two and a threat. Good. Um, and then I place one, and then I negotiate with Austria Hungary with my other one. Okay. Um, okay, What's so I threat? Need to draw one threat card. I don't think there are any threat cards that advance at three spaces. Um, two spaces. The Spanish have invaded Italy. Um, so let me get cubes back again. Italy. Yeah, that's everything. Right that's there. Italy, yeah. So one. Yeah, are there pirates? Uh, there are not pirates, uh, and he advanced too. Good. Okay. Oh, 
Oh, are you going to military and try to end the game right now? Uh, I forfeit all my action points this turn to choose a colony or place one of my opponent, one of your opponent's influence with two of your own. Um, yeah, who cares? Okay. You get a Podesta. Yep. Um, that's me. Uh, oh, here's your Doge hat. Oh, good. Um... Political. I guess I'm gonna take three. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna place. I guess I'm gonna place three here and just become the Podesta over there. Um, I think it's really optimal for me to do. I'll take this three and go one, two, and Where are you gonna put your two cubes? Do you want do you wanna take a card? Yeah. Can you use that card? I can. Oh. Uh, okay. Um I'm gonna go ahead and play this Bulla Aria card that I drew, and I get to place these cubes uh even if there's a kingdom marker there. Uh, so, okay. Well, that doesn't that matter. It doesn't at all. matter to me because I can't trace naval routes to anywhere. Yeah. Um, so I guess I'm just gonna hold on to it. Um. Where do you want a one two? I guess I'm gonna just drop one here and one here. Yeah. Uh, can't play that. Cause it's like a point either way, so I don't even understand the point of this card, but okay. So I'm gonna put a cube in Mar de Ponente. Oh. And it says if you place one influence in Mar de Ponente this turn, you may use the remaining action points to place influence on this card. And then it'll be worth one point per influence you put on this card. Wow. So that's going to be worth one big one point. point. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Uh, I guess that's me. Um, I could have discarded my Doge hat to put another oh. cube, but I like, guess we have a Doge, Doge election before it's me. Thing. Yeah, sure. Um, I don't have any cards over there, so that's too bad. Guess what? Why wouldn't you just play all of your cards? Like you know, this is there's not going to be any more elections <laughs> unless you want to right. miss a shameful all right. All right. defeat. All right, six, six. Yep. You were the last Doge. Who's the new Doge? I'm the new, new Doge. Yeah, go for it. That's why I wasn't going to play my cards. Because <laughs> I was like, I think he's just playing his six. Oh! There's no Doge hats to put on my Doge. Oh, guess what? No Doge. <laughs> guess what? The game doesn't know what to do. There's nothing to account for this situation. <laughs> so, uh, I don't even care. Take. I, I mean, I take that political die. I negotiate with these Ottomans for no reason. Um, <laughs> I guess that's just all you do. You just yeah, like, like I can't do anything else. All right, uh, and then, then there's a threat threat, card yeah. at the end of the turn, and the Spanish show up and uh, better move. Take over Pontente. Uh, 
Uh oh. Guess who's in Pontente? I am, uh, but it won't kick me out because I have. That's not Pontente. Pontente is the pink one. Yeah. The influence there. Do not worry Came about it. Came in and messed you up. Yeah. The Spanish. We're like, whoa, what are you doing here in Spain? Okay. Uh, we went through the. So you do go through the entire uh, threat deck to win the game, which is. I guess makes sense. Um, it'd be nice if there were more cards than that so you didn't know exactly how long it was going to take, but whatever. Uh. Whatever, you get lots of points. Yeah, um, I guess we can score and figure this out. All right, so um, victory point tokens. Three, three, and one. Uh, Seven. Four. Um. Okay. Okay, you get we, we everybody's in a region will get a point. So like let's just do that. So yeah. uh but like isn't there like a other you might get two points instead or Yeah, if you if you're in the if you're in the major port you get the number based okay. on So let's just start from the left. You get two over there. Okay, so two points. Uh one point uh for me being in Torino. Yep, that's it. Um Italy, I get uh just one point one point. Yeah. <laughs> and I also get one point. Uh, Dalmatia, we each get one point. Uh, Greece, we each get two points. Uh, R Archipelago, you get uh, two, two points. points. Romania, we each get three points. Uh, the Levant, I get two points. Uh, Africa. Africa, we each get two points. And that's all the areas. Podestas. Podestas. Um, okay, so I score... That one's worth three. Okay, so three for this one. Um, that one's worth two. Uh, so that's five. That's worth two. Uh, seven. Um, just, just... Okay. Nine. Just stop, stop, stop doing that. You're not helping because I already started adding things okay. in, and now you're like adding up to that number. So, so two and two. two. No, it's three. Yeah, three and two and two. Okay. Um, and three and three. Oh nope! At some point, I lost uh, enough influence to have that Podesta, and we didn't notice. So never mind. So it's on one. That's three less, yeah. Okay. Whatever. Uh, that one's worth three. That one's worth three. Two and two. And two and two. Two and two, yeah. Is that everything? Uh, I score 10 for oh. my negotiating skills. I get three. And then uh, Doge hats. Yeah, um, I have eight. Five. Score is 105 to 78. Okay. Venetia! All right. Tell me, Venetia, is it a good two-player game, or is it the greatest two-player game? Uh, I mean, you can play it with two people. <laughs> um, Clearly is not designed for two players, right? Um, <laughs> just so many problems with a two-player game. I mean, I don't know, like... 
it doesn't get to the point where like it, I think it only like got really completely dysfunctional at the very end. It, yeah, once it I ran out of pieces to, and it was just like, okay, like what's supposed to happen? Like it functions mechanically, but it's um I would say not enjoyable. Yeah. Uh, I don't you know. The argument would be that you would enjoy it more with more people, but yeah. um I guess that kind of just depends on which four people. Sure. Um, <laughs> uh, no, I definitely think uh, like it's just not particularly functional with two players because you don't have reason to compete with each other over territories so much. Um, you really need like a third or a, or even a fourth player. This game, I don't know that this game would even work well with three. Um, this may be a game where I would tell you if you're not going to play with four people, don't play it. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that if this was going to work as a two-player game, like, some territories would have to be taken out of the game. Like, you wouldn't go to, you know, Iberia, or you wouldn't go all the way over to the Black Sea. Um, I think you'd have to limit the geography uh, to a smaller area to encourage enough competition to make the game function. Um... Uh, I think, at the very least, I think the victory point bag doesn't work in a two-player game. Um, I felt like it, it's kind of, you know, say one person draws one of the few three-point ones just mm -hmm. randomly, like as their first draw, like then they will hold it for the rest of that phase. For sure. And there's only... I think four. Three? Four. Four, yeah. Of the threes and the twos. Yeah. So, I mean, I understand that's random chance, but, like, I think it's a random chance that, like, doesn't work well. Yeah, for sure. Like, our uh, like our first uh, epic, like, I drew th two threes and a pair of twos, I think, uh, to try to score. And that just left you with, like, a whole bunch of ones. So you had, like, a really low score from those in the first epic. In this game... Like, the one that we did the gameplay footage for, I didn't have, like, any victory points. Oh, well, neither of us had them in this first epic, yeah. Yeah, um, you're thinking about the previous... The, the previous game, yeah. The game. Yeah. Um, yeah um, so but it's just a problem, yeah, that one person can sit down, can be sitting on nine points, and the other person can have three uh, from those bags. Uh, what do you think about it mechanically, other than player count issues? Um... The dice are obviously terrible that come with it. Um, like, frequently we would roll them and be like, well, every die came up exactly the same, which is uh, like a die balancing issue. With, I mean, I don't know. It dice. depends on how different all the sides are. Like, if they are mostly the same on all sides, then it's not really a randomness issue. It's just like an issue of the dice mm, not being particularly interesting. Yeah, there are just like three threes on the browns and two twos and then one four um, so that's probably the way all of them are i think the dice are like mostly the same and they're not particularly compelling to me yeah like if you're gonna have different dice i want them they to should have, have like some kind of thematic difference yeah so I it's agree. like well do you want to put cubes over here or over here you do it in a different way based on what color of die you took Oh, someone took all those you know, you can't do that now now you have to do the other kind of thing mm -hmm. and like Again, that feeds into like an element of randomness that is, I don't know, almost puzzling in this kind of game. It seems like it'd be more strategic that like if you just don't ever get cards that are helpful to you, sure, and the other person gets great cards, mm -hmm. then like yeah. I kept drawing those ones that were just draw two victory point tiles and then give the other person a victory point tile. Uh, so I was just giving you ones and keeping threes. Uh, mechanically, I think it takes too long. Mm-hmm, I'd agree. And even, like, we played a two-player game, so that should be moving, like, the fastest, and it took an hour and a half, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, almost two hours. Yeah. Uh, I feel like it... I don't think there's enough interesting things happening for it to be taking as long as it does no. take. Um, I don't think that, uh... 
the length would change uh, with player count. I think that it would take about the same amount with four as it did with two because it's just the timer. Um, as long as the people who were playing weren't people who were going to take really long turns, uh, I think that there's no reason that this would change uh, the length of the game. Um, what do you think about the artwork? It's fine. Um, I like the board artwork. I think the card artwork uh, on the action cards is boring because it's exactly the same on all of them. It's just uh, the three dudes that are yeah. That's what it's, on the it's cards. fine. Like it, it doesn't hurt my feelings. Um, um, yeah, these are all the same too. Yeah, it's. I don't. I don't know that art would have been like the big draw for this game. Mm -hmm. I'm not. I'm not sure what the big draw for this game is historical significance do you yeah, do I you guess. feel like you know more about italian history and that it's more compelling to you because you know about italian history or? It, was, it was moderately compelling to me in terms of theme like what we were doing i found kind of interesting um i found the mechanical things that were happening with the action dice not like wildly uninteresting i agree with you that uh, I wish the dice were more distinct from each other rather than just being the exact same die in different colors. Um, you know, I would have liked it to be, I don't know, something like merchants generally got to take more actions, but that's spread out, you know, if it was like a 3-4-5 instead of a 2-3-4. Um, if there's some variation in that, I think that would be more interesting. Uh, but overall, like, thematically, I was interested in, you know, recreating 800 years of Venetian history and building this Venetian empire uh, of trade across the Mediterranean. Uh, I guess I don't think that the mechanic of interacting with the uh, enemy forces is very interesting. It's just like a means of scoring points. Yeah. And like a minor impediment towards, like, settling. Mm -hmm. Um you know, I think, like, it, the game is clearly not about battle, mm -hmm. um, but, you know, it's like, oh, well, the Ottomans are over here, and they're all over the place, and it's like, okay, well, like, just go over there and spend a point. Well, now you, you have a contract, with them. and you get yeah. a point at the end of the game. Um, and now that you've done that, you don't really need to do it again. So, yeah. leave the Ottomans alone. <laughs> Let or them, do. And <laughs> be Let them just place, be in the way. Yeah, you know, be able to place people there. Um, I don't know if that's like falling into like the historical like accuracy aspect of it being like well the Italians just went and made deals with everyone or if it's like like Venice is definitely uh, like a trade empire uh, republic so you know this this period of Venetian history is mostly about them going out and building these trade routes and uh, forming like merchant contracts with different kingdoms mm-hmm so I think that they intentionally didn't put, like, a lot of stuff into the military aspect of the game because Venice was not, like, a major military power in this period. Um, but even, like, making a contract with people is not interesting. No, none of it, like. yeah, none of that stuff is particularly interesting with what you're doing. Uh, it's very simplified, it's very abstract. Um, Go deal with some pirates. Yeah. Did you, did you draw a token from a bag? Good, Good job. job. You took you care of pirates. Uh, what else do you uh, feel? What do you think about uh, these doge elections uh, that seemed like also kind of a meaningless mechanic in a two-player game? Uh, hang on, like I said, it, it could be better with more people. Maybe it's fine, but it's like a oh, well, like a weird bid thing. Yeah, bidding mechanics never really, really work well in two-player games. Not only that, but like I don't even really feel like it matters. Like it's a means of getting points that I don't really care about. Uh, uh, at least in the two-player game, um, every time that. I was the doge at the start of the game, like, I was getting effectively an extra action before each scoring phase, uh, because it was, because there are, what, uh, seven dice, so it meant that there was an odd number of turns, uh, so, like, when we got to that first scoring round, I had been the doge pretty consistently, and I feel like that meant that I basically just had, like, some extra turns in there, uh, before you got turns, 
What mm-hmm. I'm saying is I don't think that that matters. I think you could just not deal with that at all and just, like, go back and forth in turns. And, oh, sure. Like, who cares? Like, it just, like, I think it kind of just evens out over the course of the game and would with more players that I think more or less everyone would get the same number of hats for points. Yeah. That seems true. And maybe, like, occasionally you choose to spend that hat to get an extra action point, but usually it doesn't really make that much of a difference, so... Uh, Do you feel like it would have been a huge deal if you'd been able to veto a threat card with your uh, doge hats um, in the optional rules, you know? I don't believe I ever would have done it, no. Yeah. I don't think I ever cared about the threats. I'm not even sure... Like, I guess at the end, you would probably have to reshuffle the cards, because there's, like, exactly the right number of cards to get to the end of the track. Um, so I guess you'd have to shuffle if uh, you canceled any. Um, yeah, the threats don't feel particularly threatening. Uh, the other nations don't feel like other nations. They're just, like, tokens that I don't care about. Mm-hmm. Like, it's it's weirdly, like, I just don't... I think that, like, if it's supposed to be extra thematic, I don't really care about, like, certain aspects of the theme that seem like they should be more important than they actually are. Okay. Uh, do you feel like the action cards were a big deal, or do you feel like that was also kind of a pointless mechanic? I think if you? you get good action cards, then you'll do significantly better than anyone else. And if someone else gets, like, action cards that are not useful to your specific... What you're doing. What you're doing, yeah. then, well, you're just impeded. And it's like, well, the counterbalance is you can choose to use that card to help you with your doge election, but, like, who cares? Like, okay. I don't think that that usually it didn't seem to matter. Again, like, this is a two-player perspective. It's possible mm-hmm. that it means more and more player games, but, like, I don't... Like, I drew a lot of single-coin cards that did not seem particularly relevant to anything and mm-hmm. just went, all right, well... Yeah, maybe if there's a reason why I might want to take the merchant die to put two cubes in one place instead of one, but I could just take a political die and put three cubes in a place instead. So yeah. it's you know a means of putting cubes in one place instead of another, and they're like you get points kind of haphazardly all over the place anyway. I think the point system is the worst thing about the game. Actually, the scoring is kind of just like. It's just kind of confusing and awful, and I'm still not positive that we did it correctly. Um, There's no internal means of, like, dealing with it in a way that makes any sense. You kind of just, like, do the math and write it down. Yeah. Uh, The larger cities that are maybe worth more, probably worth more, should be marked specifically in a way that makes sense. Like, they should have, like, a, a ring around them or something that's, like, they are slightly larger, but once you have cubes on top of them, you can't see that anymore. Yeah, and you can't see that it's a four instead of a three, so you kind of just have to know where... So you just move all the are. cubes out of the way every time you yeah. do scoring. Um, and that's kind of like a weird functionality problem that someone should have raised an issue with along the way and said, this doesn't make any sense, why don't you fix this? Yeah. Um... I feel like, uh... And then, yeah, not having a scoring track is kind of like... Yeah, not having a scoring like, track is If you've is got obnoxious. a board this large, it's like, what is... Why? Yeah, why didn't you just put it around the outside? Um, there's even, like, this this colored band thing happening around the outside that they could have just slapped some numbers on, and it would have instantly worked as a score track. Uh... I feel like, uh... That's most of what... I had in mind to talk about. Okay. I'll give you something to talk about. Okay. Who designed this game? I don't know, actually. Who did? The people who designed this game designed War of the Ring. Okay. Does that put anything into context for you, comparing this game to that game? Because inevitably you have to, because War of the Ring is so successful. I guess. Um. Um. I don't think so like it doesn't feel like war of the ring anywhere uh i might argue that it does and that there's that sort of weird combination of dice and card mechanics and like oh, how I you suppose. accomplish things in the area control fashion yeah um and like if i'm putting the two games side by side i think war of the ring is much less clunky in every way yeah um like, you might not want to play a game about, you know, elves and things, and so you want to play a game about Italian history, but, um, like, from a area control perspective, that's a better-designed game 
Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, it, like you said, it's like that game is focused more on like combat and strategy instead of yeah, and like the like the action cards are very thematic in tone, where like these action cards. I never felt Maybe like... Maybe they're thematic. Yeah, I never felt like... There are assassinations. Venetian Villa, Villa was a big deal. Someone um, can get assassinated or... You know, bombardment. Bribed or something. Yeah. Diplomacy. Yeah. Uh, I feel like the action cards are super generic, so... Um, I would say the only, like, thing that... Like, feels even remotely like War of the Ring to me about this is just, like, some of their artistic choices for the board... Um, that there's maybe uh, some similarity there of just like the the type of map that they chose and the type of uh, like iconography they have for the map. Uh, but you're right, yeah, it does have that dice mechanic and card mechanic happening. Uh, did I ask you? Um, oh, I asked you about part of this uh, additional Doge mechanic. Uh, do you feel like the other election method that uh, we talked about is something that... I don't understand the other actual election method. Yeah, so like, like, I don't... Just instead of getting cards uh, that go under here, you take the number of coins on the card and put them in these six cities. Uh, and then you're drawing tokens to determine which of these six cities are electing the Doge. Uh, so it means that you have, like, less control over... Uh, how much of a bonus you're adding to the card you're playing. Uh, because it's going to be randomized here. Do you feel like that would change anything or no? I don't know. I don't think it would. Does it seem more thematic to do that? It's like, I don't... Maybe. Um. <laughs> we looked at it multiple times and went, do you want to do this instead? And it's, I, said, I don't know. Like... <laughs> Do whatever you think you want to do, and you went with the basic rules, so... I figured that, you know, if somebody was watching this, they probably just want to know how to play the game, don't care about the, like, optional choices that much. Do you think it matters starting with tokens on the board or not? I think it doesn't at all. Yeah. Um, because the places where it tells you to start with tokens, uh, you start with, like, one over in the Levant, uh, one over here in Iberia, um, and I think the other one's in Africa. Uh, so, like... Oh, no, no, the other one's in Romania. Um, so, like, there are three places that you aren't going to get to anytime soon, at least not in a two-player game. Um, maybe in, like, a four-player game, people would, like, really push out and try to get into Romania really fast, and you'd see, like, the sea routes become established a lot faster. Uh, where, you know, like, we never bothered to play more than our single cube that we needed in a lot of these uh, sea spaces. I have a question because I actually genuinely don't know. If, like, we've established a sea route, can it be unestablished by pirates? Yeah, yeah, it just causes like, you to remove the token. Okay. So, like, it seems like just a waste of time to put to try to fully establish sea routes. I mean, you say that, but I am now thinking about the fact that... Uh, I was sad that I didn't have cubes at one point in the game, but I have five cubes that are just sitting in C spaces right now. Um, I suppose if I had, uh, you know, stacked those up in uh, smaller areas uh, so that we could put Venetian tokens down, I would have gotten those cubes back, and then I would have been able to actually do something with them. Not that it would have had any effect whatsoever on the game because I didn't have enough Podesta tokens to do anything, but I could have had those coupe cubes back i guess uh and there again i think that's just like a thing in the four player game probably that you'd have a lot more uh places where you only had like one or two cubes and be spread out across the board a lot more with uh, fewer places where you had a podesta uh infamy did you feel like that mattered at all did you uh choose not to be infamous intentionally Oh, I, I don't think I... I think I ignored that it was even a thing in the game. <laughs> uh, I, it seemed uh, like you started doing it when you saw that I just stopped caring about the Doge elections and you were just going to... Oh, I did it. One. I started doing it when I only had my one left anyway. So I was like, well, I can't play anything but a one, so I might as well just attack the crap out of places with Podestas and... Yeah, no. I think that's not a good mechanic because I think that it's... If the point is to dissuade people from just like beating up on other people, like it's not a not really a penalty. Yeah. 
So, like, I, I don't really understand what its intent is, because, yeah, you you could gain the infamy token to take a military action and draw a tile out of the bag to place influence in a spot, or you just take the political action and just drop four cubes in that place. Uh, I think that's it. Um, what are you going to rate Venetia? 4.5. 4.5. Yeah. I was going to give it like a 5. Well, mm -hmm. you, you do it. You're your own man, so you do what you uh, want to do. I think that's mostly just because like, I uh, I like the theme a little bit more. Um, and My argument is that I probably don't know of anyone that would I would pull this game out and say, we're going to play this game now. Yeah. Knowing what it is. Yeah. Like... I would play other area control games before this. Um, if you know someone who's really into Italian history, they might. This might be the game for them, but mm -hmm. um, I think it's slower than it needs to be, and it doesn't feel like I did a lot in the time that we were playing the game for as long as it is. Whereas, like War of the Ring is a long game, but it feels like you're doing things the whole time. Yeah, I agree. So I felt like we just. We're putting cubes everywhere, and... Then sometimes they'd get picked up. And you put them back down. Yeah. Until the game ends. And I just wanted the game to move just a lot faster. Um, I also felt like I more or less had been crippled in the early game by poor card draws, by poor token draws specifically. Like, mm -hmm. repeatedly drawing yeah, yeah, yeah. zero yeah. and card instead of any put any cubes down. Yeah, that mechanic is odd. Um, and I just kind of thought, well, okay, I'm going to continue playing this game, but I don't have really any desire to try to make a comeback because I feel like I'm extremely hampered by just the poor luck that I've experienced early in the game. Yeah. So uh, I'm, you know, I could play another game and have perfect luck and like, you know, just smash every single time I have political... Uh, make a military action, just kind of like... Yeah, just be like, oh, two, 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 two. And, but like, I don't... Yeah, whatever. for sure. Like, I don't... Well, I guess that's Venetia. Um, do you have any uh, Venetian quotes for us? No. Uh, there's some Shakespeare plays set in Venice, right? Uh -huh. I think uh, I think Romeo and Juliet set in Venice. So I guess uh, that's a Venetian thing. Oh, no, it's Verona. They're in Verona, not in Venice. Terrible. Uh, in the Fourth Crusade, uh, the Venetians uh, were heading for, you know, Jerusalem to go uh, capture it. Uh, they stopped in Constantinople, the capital of the Byzantine Empire, and uh, while they were there... Uh, got involved in their civil war, and the Fourth Crusade just ended up sacking Constantinople and never went to Jerusalem. Okay. 